Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yeah. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome today to Jesus the Healer. Thank you for taking the time to be with us and bring your faith. That's yeah. right. Release your faith. Yeah. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, what does it mean to release your faith? Expect something. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. Expect something. Yes. Then agree and say things that are in agreement with the word. Say it over your own life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you don't even have to wait till the broadcast is over to say it. Yeah. <laughs> When you hear something that stands up in your heart, mm, feeds your faith, say it. Amen. We're looking at these two words called hold fast mm -hmm. because they play such an important role mm -hmm. in the life of faith. Yes. That we're learning to hold fast in the face of circumstances mm -hmm. that, that oppose us. Yes. Um, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. And before we read it, I want to say this. Go back and watch previous episodes yes. because we build upon this each time. And yes. so we want you to get the whole picture of what we've been teaching. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. It reads, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. Our confession of what? Our confession of what God says. Yes. Our confession of the word, our profession of the word, yes. that we hold fast to what God says. Yes. Um, notice Jesus has a part. What is that? He's the high priest of our profession or our confession. We have a part. What is it? To make our confession. That's right. That's right. That's right. And once we make it, he's listening for it. Yes. Right. Yes. That's the truth. Give him something to hear. Yes. Yes. He cannot be the high, the high priest of our silence. Wow. That's good. Our absence of saying. Yes. Our lack of saying. Uh -huh. He's the high priest of what we say that's in line with the word, the yes. confession of it. Yes. And then Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 reads, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Yes. So it's not enough to have a profession. We have to not waver, have a firm grip, yes. firm hold on what we believe, what we're saying, and we're not backing up on that. Yes. Why? Look at the last phrase of Hebrews 10, 23. For he is faithful that promised. Amen. That's why we can certainly hold fast because we know this, he'll always fulfill what he says. Amen. Amen. Then we were also looking at Revelations chapter 2, verse 25. It reads, But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Mm -hmm. There's two ways to look at this. That which has manifested. Uh -huh. yeah. Hold fast. Yes. Once you've received an answer, yes. once you've received a miracle, once you've received help yes. to a need, hold fast to that. Yes. Well, that's certainly true. Yes. But notice it doesn't say that which has manifested hold fast. It says right. that which you have. Wow. You have things in Christ that you might not have had come to manifestation yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's true. That's true. It's waiting for your faith. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In Christ, you have healing. In Christ, you have provision. In Christ, you have an inheritance that meets every need of this life. So that which you have already, you have that. Whether it's manifested or not, you have that. Amen. So we could read it that way there in Revelation uh, 2, verse 25. Revelation, rather, verse chapter 2, verse 25. But that which you have. Just agree with the word that I have these things. Already hold fast. Hold fast. Why? Because that's what will bring them into manifestation. Right. Amen. 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 
Praise the Lord. Praise then the Lord. we've been saying this, make sh holding fast means you don't change what you believe just because circumstances are felt right. and seen that are different. Right. Yeah. Don't let circumstances rewrite what you believe. Amen. 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 You believe God was your provider before that unexpected bill right. showed up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> When it shows up, still believe he's your still provider. Right. Don't change and go to, what am I going to do? Right. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to do the right thing. You're going to confess the word. Yes. <laughs> Jesus is listening as the high priest. He's listening for your confession. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is listening for it. Mm -hmm. To hold fast, this is a key thing to holding fast. We're daily confessing. Yes. We're daily making our profession. It's a lifestyle with us. Yes. It's not just random moments in our life. Right. It's not just a random way we talk. It's our lifestyle. Yes. That we, the, the outflow of our life is confessing what the Word says. Yes. And I'm not talking about you go around talking in Scripture and verse all day. Sure. I'm saying that the truths have worked their way into your conversation. Yes. Yes. That you're, you're on the positive side. You're on the Word yes. side. Yes. That when, when the boss tells you, you know, the numbers in our department are going down, just your first automatic response is, that'll change. That'll change. That'll change. We're, it'll increase. See, you, you're, 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 you, have thought, you have faith thoughts. And it's not like you trying to on purpose dig out a faith thought. It becomes the flow of your thought life. It becomes the flow of what you believe. It's just an automatic outflow. Amen. Amen. What enables us to hold fast mm -hmm. whenever things are pushing against us? Mm -hmm. What is it? It's ongoing feeding on the word yes. and Amen. confessing that word. That's right. That's right. Ongoing intake of the word. Right. Ongoing releasing right. of the faith. Yes. Releasing that word you take in through the confession uh -huh. you make. Yes. Amen. 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 Anytime we have backed up on standing our ground, we probably first quit hearing. Uh, that's good. We weren't hearing as much as we ought. Yes. Yes. Because ongoing hearing mm -hmm. will help keep our confession right up front. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. We won't have to dig around to find a good confession. Right. It, it, helps, it helps equip our tongue. Right. That's right. right with the right words, yes. with the confession. Amen. Hold fast that victory is yours. Yes. When it looks like it's going the wrong direction, uh -huh. right. when it looks like everything is getting worse, yes. hold fast. Hold fast. Yes. That's what we've been reading, these yes. scriptures. Hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. Amen. There was one precious woman of God that was, um, my, 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 an example of a spiritual woman. And she made, she's in heaven now, but she made this, statement years ago. And she had, my, 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 she had such a robust, effective prayer life. Mm -hmm. Her prayer life was, she moved in, in places of prayer with God mm -hmm. that few even know that are available. Mm -hmm. And she makes this statement. She said, people quit too soon. Uh -huh. People quit too soon. Yeah. Yeah. How was God able to use her in the spiritual exploits that he used her in, she knew how not to quit. Right. Right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Don't practice quitting. Yeah. That's good. Amen. So many, really, if people are going to be led by their flesh, led by their mind, mm -hmm. led by the reasonings of their thought mm -hmm. life, they'll quit. Yes. Yes. That's yes. True. They'll quit. That's right. yes. Don't practice quitting. Right. Practice holding fast yes. to the word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Some, if, this is where some people uh, let, they practice quitting if they don't see an immediate change. Right. 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 Uh -huh. They let go of it. Yes. Yes. That's why the word says hold fast because everything is not going to be instantaneous right. in its manifestation. Uh -huh. And it's not because of God. It's because of the world. It's because of the, the devil. It's yeah. because of yeah. opposition. Sure. The flow of the world. You've got to go against the flow of the world when you yes. make some confessions because some things that we confess are a, a totally opposite to the way the world flows. Yes. That's, that's, that's true. true. Yes. Yep. That's 
And so all these things that try to hinder the the flesh, the world, the devil, all these things that try to hinder the flow of God, your confession has to go upstream against all that. Just keep pushing it. Just keep pushing it. Just keep pushing it. What happens to those who aren't holding fast? They're floating with the flow. They're just going with the flow of the world, going with the flow of fear, going with the flow of worry, going with the flow of doubt. They're just going with whatever carries them. And to go the to go in line with the Holy Ghost and go the way of the Word, you're on purpose going against the flow that's all the way around you. Amen. What does uh, Psalm 23 verse 5 say? Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Um, what is that? The flow of the enemy. Yes. Yeah. It's in this world. Yes. It's around us. Yes. But we have a table yes. to nourish us yes. to go a different direction than right. the flow of the enemy yes. offers. Yes. Right. Amen. 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 Hold on until your victory comes into manifestation. Amen. Don't let go. Yes. Don't right. let go. Don't let go. Yes. And one, one thing that's imperative to holding fast is knowing what God's saying to you. Yes. 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 Know what he's saying to you. Don't just pick a random favorite verse. Look to the Holy Ghost. What would he quicken to you? Remember what David said in the book of Psalms? He said, quicken thou. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Quicken me according to your word. He'll quicken a word to you. What do I mean? You say, Pastor Nancy, what do you mean by quicken? It's like a verse comes to you and it seems to be a living thing. I mean, whoo, that thing. Ah, it's not just a verse I know. It's a verse that speaks to me. It it, it stands up on the inside of me. What is that? God's quickening something to you. Grab that quickened verse, that quickened passage. Yes. Hold to that because it will have a life-giving force in it Amen. that will help you in the holding fast. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Let's look there. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Now remember what I said that this one woman said who had a, such an effective prayer life. She said, people quit too soon. See, who, who are we to get to decide what's appropriate time passage. Because when I got in first grade, graduating to the 12th would have been good by the end of that first year. (laughs) That would have been perfect for me, right? But that's not the appropriate passage of time. It took time for me to grow and develop, right? And for you to grow and to develop. Well, see, we don't get to pick how how appropriate the time is, meaning uh, people will say, well, if it doesn't happen by the end of the week, that's it. Uh And we, Uh you can't clock what's eternal. The flow of God's an eternal thing. The inheritance of God, it's eternal for us. And it's not governed by the calendar. It's not governed by the clock. Mm -hmm. Now, don't misunderstand me. Sometimes the Spirit of God will say, by the end of this year, right. such and such will have happened in your life. Right. Will you, if the Holy Ghost gives you that, it's so that you, you know how to set your faith, not so you can hold Him mm-hmm. to in a, 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 a mentality of impatience. Because mm-hmm. some people will patiently endure for a certain amount of time. And if God doesn't meet their clock or their calendar, they're ready to question the whole thing. Well, this faith stuff doesn't work. Says who? Says your clock? (laughs) Says your calendar? God will, he will preempt our calendar and our clock when we start measuring the word by those natural things. We don't hold to the word because we like the measurement of time is short and then give up if it's long. God's going to teach us. It's not about the clock and it's not about the calendar. The more you put a calendar and clock on it, the more he's going to teach you. It ain't about the calendar and the clock. And you'll end up delaying things by measuring faith by the calendar. You'll end up delaying it. Now, like I said, sometimes the Holy Ghost will prompt you and author 
believe for such and such by this time frame, but don't you put a time frame on God. Yes. Amen. That's right. Because many times people are putting that time frame on God from a place of impatience, not from a place of faith. Like I'll, I'll hold out until the end of the month, but that's it. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't come by the end of the month, we're just going a different route. Giving God an ultimatum. Now, well, that's not faith. Amen. You know what I'm interested in? The victory. Yes. I'm not interested in the calendar, yes. not interested in the clock. I'm interested in the victory. Yes. And people will, uh, people will, if I could say this, measure God by how quick something happens. Well, I know this, the word tells us that God is not slow or slack concerning his promises. What's he doing? He's waiting on us. <laughs> He's waiting on us to believe past a calendar and a clock apart from a calendar and a clock. Yes. Why? Because we don't have any of our expectation on a timeline. Yes. All of our expectation is on Him. Yes. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense yes. to anybody. Yes. But the flesh wants to clock things, yes. don't we? Yes. Because so much of our life, uh, the clock is a part of that. I've got to get back to work by a certain time. I've got to get home by a certain time. I've got a deadline on a pro- project at work. There's the clock, but we can't throw God into that. Because the natural side can become very impatient. Sure. I don't care how long something takes. Mm-hmm. I'm holding fast. There are things that God has said to me about my future. He showed it to me 35 years ago that we're just now seeing. Mm-hmm. 35 years. Yeah, wow. Now see, if you're not going to hold fast, mm-hmm. you would have tried to make something happen and messed up the whole thing. Yes. Gotten off course, gotten off track, yes. get into all kinds of financial trouble, make, trying to make something happen on your, on your own that God said would come to pass. But if you'll just hold fast. And I, if I could say this, hold fast with joy. Not with impatience and <laughs> hard to live with just because it, it went past your assigned due date. <laughs> John G. Lake makes this statement. Now, John G. Lake had a a, a general in the faith, Mm -hmm. such results with the healing ministry. And he makes a statement. Now, listen to what he said. He said, I believe sometimes our instant healings are a curse to us Mm -hmm. because people then never learn how to hold fast in the face of opposition. Because, see, the flesh likes right now. But faith quits measuring by clock. Faith holds to the word regardless of how long. Now, don't misunderstand me. When you're in faith, there will be progress. Things will change. So don't hold to something for time after time after time and nothing's changing that really should be changing. Sometimes you got to check and say, what am I doing What am I leaving out? What am I not believing right or thinking right about? Because all of that can delay, you see. But I'm just saying don't put God on a timeline as a threat as though I'm I'm, I'm coming off of this if this doesn't happen by a certain amount of time. That's that's, that's not a spiritual approach. And listen, everyone's flesh wants to go that way at a time. You, you got to rein that in. Amen. Um, we've got to learn, as this precious woman of God taught us, people quit too soon. Amen. Don't quit. Amen. I don't care how long it takes yes. um, because the victory belongs to me and I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold fast. Yes. Galatians chapter six, verse nine. Did I tell you that one already? Yes. How about we go there? Yes. <laughs> Galatians six, verse nine says, be not weary. Mm-hmm. Right. For in due season, we will reap yes. if we faint not. Yes. Now look, where do, you know where weary, the, the greatest degree of weariness can happen is not in the body, in the mind. Yes, yes. yes that's right. <laughs> Uh, if people grow weary mentally, mm-hmm. they think wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It it will rob from them. Yes. So don't don't allow yourself to get tired yeah. up here. Well, how do how do you not get tired up there? Keep filling up with the word. Yes. Keep filling up with the word. Yes. Live full of the word. Yes. Live full of the spirit, and you'll be refreshed. Yes. 
times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Get in the presence of the Lord. When you're holding fast, do it from a place of his presence. Don't do it from a place of mental, uh, you know, just trying to stay motivated. (laughs) That natural side. No. If people faint, now listen, let me read it again. Be not weary for in due season. What's due season? When things are ripe. When it's ripe for harvest. I mean, my dad was a cotton and wheat farmer. I know about a harvest being ripe. Mm -hmm. You never would ever think of reaping something when there was no fruit on it, Mm -hmm. on the, on the vine, on the plant. When there was, for my dad, it was wheat and cotton. When there's no wheat heads on there, when there's no cotton, you don't reap it. It's not due yet. But daddy was never saying, I want to reap today and I can't. No, he didn't want to reap until he saw the fruit show up. So be not weary for when everything is ripe. When you can get the richest harvest in due season, we will reap. Look who's going to have to reap it. We will reap. We not only sow a seed, we have to reap the harvest of a seed. We not only sow a confession, we reap the harvest of that confession. With what? With what we say, what we believe, what we hold fast to. We will reap if we faint not. God's not going to (laughs) faint. He's not the variable we are. If we faint not. If people faint they have quit holding fast. If people faint, they quit resisting opposition. They become less earnest and persistent. And to endure, we have to be earnest. We have to be persistent. Amen. 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 Not being earnest and not being persistent, we'll just just let go of things. You know, I would say this, there are things... I can look back over my life, my Christian life, and say, you know what? I let go of some things. Yes. If you let go of them, you can pick them back up. Yes. They're not lost. Yes. Spiritual things are not like natural things. Natural things can ruin, right. spoil, yes. become, uh, go past their due date, uh-huh. not spiritual things. Right. Yeah. Sometimes people laid down things decades ago. You can still pick it up because in the spirit, nothing rots. You can pick it back up. Don't let the devil bombard you, condemn you, push you down because you've let go of some things. You know, that's just like him. (laughs) That's just like the devil. Uh, You go to hold fast to something and then he opposes you and then he accuses you for letting go of it. And he was the one jerking it from you, trying to jerk it from you. Um, even if you let go of some things, pick them back up. Any, if, if I could say it this, we know this, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we, and, and we know this, the, the devil, he robs the word from us. But he'll rob health from people. He'll rob peace from people, rob joy from people. Anything he robs from us that came into his hands as a thief, the longer he has it, doesn't make it more his. He's still a thief. Whether he robbed something from you yesterday or 10 years ago, it's still not his. I don't care how long he's had it. I don't care how long he kept it from you. It's still not his. You can still have it. You can still have it. Go get it. Go get it. Pick back up. You say, well, Pastor Nancy, how do I pick it back up? With your confession. With your confession. And hold fast. Amen. Be not weary. Be not weary. For in due season, we will reap if we faint not. The more stubborn our opposition is, the more stubborn the enemy is, the more stubborn symptoms are, the more stubborn financial situations are, the more persistent and the more earnest we must be. The more we must strengthen our grip of holding fast. Amen. Amen. 
Jesus already won for us. That's right. But it does call for us to hold fast to what was won. That's right. Amen. Amen. We have to be interested enough yes. to hold fast. Yes. Like I said, sometimes people lose things. They drop things from that grip of holding fast because they lost interest. Right. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um, what you don't hear just keep flowing into your life, you'll lose interest in. Uh-huh. That's, true. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why we need to be feeding on the word all the time. It yeah. feeds our yes. it feeds our interest. It yes. feeds our want to. It yes. feeds our desire yes. towards what he's made ours. Yes. That's so that we're not okay with not having it anymore. Yes. Right. That's right. Yeah. I remember something that years ago, oh my goodness, 30 something years ago, I remember I was having um some symptoms in my body. And I, and I said to God, which you can tell baby Christian don't know what I done, <laughs> needed help, <laughs> needed the right thinking. Uh, I said to God, why don't you just go ahead and heal me? Why don't you just go ahead? Like on, it's on your side, you know, it's on, it's on, it's on your side. Why don't you just go ahead and heal me? And he said, if you were hurting bad enough, you'd do something about this. In other words, you're not interested. You're interested if it drops on you, but you're not interested if you have to do anything. Well, let me, let me just say this. The word calls for our participation. Every miracle we have to participate in. I want to pray for you right now. Those of you that you have pain and symptoms in your body, that power is flowing right now. I say, Satan, you take your hands off their bodies. That which they have laid down, we pick back up. That which I've laid down, I pick back up. That which they have laid down, we pick it back up. Healing is ours. A pain-free body is ours. A a disease-free body is ours. So we say, Satan, you take your hands off our body. We hold fast that Jesus is our healer and he's our healer now. We have healing now regardless of what we feel, see, or what we hear. We have it now and we thank you for it, Father, right now. In Jesus' name, it's ours. We receive it. It's ours and we rejoice over it. Amen. Hallelujah. Right where you're at, say, I take it. It's mine right now. It's mine. Hallelujah. And hold fast. And you don't want to miss next time because we're going to keep going further. But until then, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, Peace, Living Free from Worry, she teaches how to close the door to worry, fear, and doubt. Order now at DufresneMinistries.org. Come join us for our Dufresne Ministries Miracle Crusade in Tulsa, Oklahoma at The Rock Church, April 16th through the 20th. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach, but a Spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end, that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. 
uh, yeah. it's not just the book learning. But this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yeah. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I build here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have. Uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing. If you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play. And you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful. And you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible school, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself, more than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that um, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.